As people obsessed with teaching people how to plan their Disney World trips, we are full of tips and advice, and today we have 111 of them to share with you. Let's break these down by category and jump right in. Let's start with some tips for first timers. Download and practice using the My Disney Experience app. Nearly everything that you'll need to do in the parks will be done within it, including mobile ordering, making Genie Plus selections, etc. Don't underestimate how much walking you'll be doing. It can be exhausting and Disney World trips will wear you out. If you are not used to walking several miles per day at home, it is a good idea to incorporate some walking before your trip and make sure you have the right shoes to do it. Although it will be tricky, avoid trying to see and do everything because you cannot and instead focus on making good memories and choose the highest priority things to do during your trip. Things will always take longer than you think and Walt Disney World is huge, twice the size of Manhattan huge. Allow up to 90 minutes each way for transportation. Did you forget something at home? The resort gift shops carry a lot of basic necessities, plus you can also have Amazon, Instacart, or Uber Eats orders delivered to your resort. Don't be afraid to schedule a break day, especially if your trip is four days or more. It is really hard to make good memories if everybody is exhausted. If you're staying on site, make sure you set aside time to enjoy your resort, go swimming, check out planned activities on the recreation schedule, or just find a quiet spot to relax. The Disney resorts are really great, but it's easy to forget to plan time to explore them. Lots and lots of Disney restaurants require advanced dining reservations. Those open up at 6 a.m. Eastern time, sometimes even a few minutes before that, 60 days before your check-in date, and spots for the most popular places, like the character meals, can go fast. Make sure you set a calendar reminder so you can make yours right at that 60 day mark. And now for some Genie Plus tips. Genie Plus requires you to be on your phone a lot and that can drain your battery. Make sure you pack an external battery to keep your phone charged during the day. Fuel rods are also available in the parks and resorts to purchase and or exchange. Use a clock like a watch or a phone with a second hand to count down the seconds to the drop time for Genie Plus and individual lightning lane selections. More individual lightning lane spots usually open up around 7.10 to 7.15 a.m. As people fail to complete their transactions, they start it at seven. If you don't get what you want right at seven, keep trying. Refresh, refresh, refresh. As people cancel their Genie Plus reservations, those spots are returned to the pool. If you are looking for something specific, keep trying. If you are traveling with more than one person that can help you book, and your plan is to try to snag both Genie Plus selections and individual lightning lanes, as long as you both have your own My Disney Experience accounts and you are connected as family and friends, you can divide up the tasks and have one person do one and one person do the other. Unlike the old FastPass Plus system, you can have Genie Plus and individual lightning lane reservations overlap. This can come in particularly handy if you want to stack several back to back to make touring the parks easier. Let's talk tips for attractions. The back rows on mini coasters are the fastest and the roughest spot to be. Whenever possible, cast members will try to accommodate special seating requests if you would like to sit there. Astro Orbiter, Dumbo, Magic Carpets of Aladdin, and Triceratops Spin all have controls you can move that allow riders to go either up and down or tilt front to back. Make sure that you or the little ones you're riding with know this ahead of time so you can make the most of the ride. For the best score on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, aim for targets that are smaller and further away. You can also hit the same target multiple times. Some of the targets that will get you the most points fast include the one on the left hand of the robot in the first room and the targets on the volcano in the following room. You can completely skip the scary portion of Haunted Mansion and bypass the stretching room and creepy parts to walk straight onto the ride. Just let a cast member know as you walk from the outside of the queue inside and they will escort you through some hallways and straight toward the ride. Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse will give you fantastic views of Magic Kingdom and several cool spots for photos. People are often scared to ride Mission Space at Epcot due to the potential for motion sickness. One way to make it easier is to make sure you face forward during the ride. Parents often want to look at their children next to them, but the best idea is just to face forward and watch the screen in front of you. You can also choose the green option for this ride instead of the orange one because the green one is much easier. Tom Sawyer Island is a great spot to let kids stretch their legs without having to wait in any attraction lines. For most people, the 3D effects in attractions like Muppet Vision 3D and Mickey's Philhar Magic are best seen from a little further back in the theaters. The animals on Kilimanjaro Safari are more active first thing in the morning or late afternoon. Now let's talk ways to save money for your Disney World trip. 
You can save some money by eating breakfast in your room and bringing your own drinks and snacks with you into the parks. There is no problem with Disney security. They are totally fine with you doing that. Do you have a big family? You can rent a camper and stay at Fort Wilderness, which will give you a totally different experience while also giving you more beds than what you'll find in one room at a regular resort. While discounts are never guaranteed, you can get a good idea of what to expect by checking what discounts have previously been offered. We have an entire spreadsheet and article on this if you'd like to check that out. Just about anywhere at Disney World, including small kiosks, will give you cups of ice water for free. Consider this as an alternative to carrying water bottles, which can be heavy, especially if you need several bottles of water for your family. If you have an annual pass, are a Disney Vacation Club member, or have a Disney visa, don't forget to ask about discounts when shopping and dining. Book your trip during a less busy time of the year for the lowest prices. If you're flying, considering flights on Tuesday or Wednesday for the least expensive flights. Save big money on your deluxe resort stay by renting Disney Vacation Club points. Unless you are absolutely positive that you will need park hopper tickets, hold off buying them since you can always upgrade a ticket at guest relations, but you can't get your money back if you don't end up using the park hopping feature. You can save some money by purchasing Disney gift cards at a discount. Places like Sam's, Target, using a red card, and websites like giftcarddeal.com offer them for less than the face value. Many people buy in bulk to pay for entire Disney trips, allowing them to save a few hundred dollars. However, do consider what will happen if you cancel and end up with hundreds or thousands of dollars back on those Disney gift cards. Now for some park touring tips. For optimal touring and the shortest waits, you should plan to arrive at all four parks before they open. This is especially true if staying on site since on site guests have the ability to utilize the early theme park entry option. Not an early bird, consider staying late until park closing time. If you're walking down Main Street at Magic Kingdom and the streets seem packed, look at the sidewalks to see if they're less busy. People often stick to the street, so the sidewalks can be a great way to get down Main Street with fewer people around you. People staying at the Boardwalk and Epcot area resorts like Beach Club, Yacht Club, Swan, Dolphin, and Boardwalk should think strongly about buying park hopper tickets to take advantage of being so close to Epcot. Consider spending the first part of the day at another park and then head over to Epcot in the evenings to eat at a restaurant and explore a few of the countries. If little ones in your group cannot ride a ride, don't make them sit and wait for everybody. Keep them busy nearby doing other things. We have a chart of ideas on our Rider Switch article to keep little ones nearby but busy while bigger kids and adults ride. The parks stay open later than the published closing time. The published closing time is when restaurants and line queues will close, but the shops and photographers will still be out much later. The first row of Soren allows you to view the screen without any feet dangling. However, the third row of Soren does not have extra motion like the first two rows, making it a good option for people prone to motion sickness. Never underestimate the power of a midday break. Whenever possible, try to get out of the parks and the heat for at least a few hours to allow everybody a chance to rest and recharge. If it's raining while you're in the parks, don't be afraid to still get pictures taken. If the PhotoPass photographers are still out, you can get some fun shots. If you like to shop, consider visiting the shops during the first hour the parks are open for lighter crowds or during the middle of the day when you need a break from the heat. If swimming is a must do, but you want to avoid crowds, consider starting your day at the pool and then head to the parks later in the day. Make it easy for your group to know the daily plans without relying on their phones by creating pocket size itineraries that you can laminate so that they are sweat and water resistant. Disney first aid stations are fantastic resources in the parks. You'll find them in all four parks and they are staffed with nurses that are able to dispense over-the-counter meds like Tylenol, allergy medications, band-aids, earplugs, etc. They also have spots available if you are feeling ill and need a place to lay down for a bit. The first aid centers also have baby care centers adjacent to them, which is perfect for taking care of little ones. Walt Disney World is huge, so to avoid getting lost or spinning your trip with your nose stuck on a map, spend some time at home before your trip looking at the parks on Google Street View or actual maps of the parks. You can jump between nearby 360 photos in Google Maps or the ground level view on Google Earth. We suggest bringing a towel in your park bag to dry off seats after the rain or claim your seat at a parade. As an alternative to a bath or hand towel that might be bulky, Turkish towels are a great idea. They're super absorbent, but take up a lot less room even though they are large. As a bonus, they dry pretty fast too. The headliners in each park are great, but when you're tired, hot, cranky, or just need to get out of the rain, head to the less popular attractions for a bit of a respite. They typically have low to no weights and are a great place to recharge. 
If you are planning at least one full park day in every park, consider using your arrival day to visit a park with the purpose of knocking out one or more of the headliners. Doing that can make touring much more relaxed on your full park day. And now for tips on one of my favorite topics, transportation. If you're staying off-site during your trip, strongly, strongly consider renting a car for your trip as shuttle services from off-site locations can be unreliable and or infrequent. Make sure you are comparing apples to apples when considering the price of staying on-site versus off-site. If staying off-site, make sure you add the cost of that rental car plus daily parking at Disney World. Check places like TripAdvisor for reviews of your off-site location to see how others view the shuttles that are available. Use your phone to help find your car. You can have your phone remember where you parked or you can take a picture of your parking spot and the nearest lot sign to reference later. This makes finding your car at the end of a long day much easier. You can rent a car when staying at an on-site Disney World resort, which can be helpful when spending some time at places outside of Disney World like Universal, the beach, etc. Alamo and National have offices at the on-site Disney World Car Care Center. They will send a shuttle to your Disney World resort to take you to get your car. Call the Car Care Center for more information. People who will be using bus transportation to get from the airport to their Disney World resort and want a pic of the iconic Disney World sign should try to sit at the front. Learning how to use burst mode on your camera will help with taking pics while in motion. When taking a lift to leave Epcot, you can go out the back entrance at the International Gateway at Epcot and catch a ride from Disney's Beach Club Resort instead of going to the front entrance. This can save you a lot of steps depending on where you are in the park as you head out. If you are using rideshare to get to the boardwalk area, consider being dropped off at the Swan and Dolphin if you don't have a dining reservation. They don't require a reservation while the other resorts often do. When booking your trip, if possible, we recommend waiting to book flights or booking with an airline like Southwest that allows for free changes until after the discounts for your trip dates have been announced. Sometimes when discounts are released, they don't cover your exact trip dates, but would work if you could modify your dates just slightly. If you already have flights booked, this isn't always possible since flights are almost always non-refundable and unchangeable. If it makes sense for your trip, try to wait to book flights to allow for maximum flexibility. Don't wait too long though. We recommend booking flights around two or three months before your trip. Millions of families fly in and out of MCO Airport every year, and for lots of them, it might be their first time flying. The combination of first-time flyers and lots of families may mean there are longer delays than expected at the ticket counters and security checkpoints, so be sure to allow extra time for that. If you're flying into Orlando and planning to rent a car, be sure to check the neighborhood locations for better prices. You can often save a lot of money even after paying for a Lyft or Uber to take you there, and the one-way drop-off costs to return the car to the airport are typically just a few dollars. When searching for airfare, use kayak.com slash flights to see if now is a good time to buy. Flight prices can vary greatly from airport to airport, so be sure to check all of your options since sometimes you can save a lot of money by driving a bit to a different airport. TSA PreCheck can save you lots of time, especially at the Orlando airport. Before you sign up for it though, make sure you check with your credit card company since many credit cards and loyalty programs will reimburse you for some or all of the application fee. If you are staying at any of the Epcot resorts like Yacht Club, Beach Club, Boardwalk, you can hop on any of the resort buses when leaving any of the parks at the end of your day. The terminals are usually near each other at each park and the resorts are connected by a path around the lake. The walk between any of the resorts isn't too bad and you can really cut down on the time you'll wait for a bus if you opt to go with the first available. If staying in an on-site resort near Magic Kingdom or Epcot, consider spending the first part of your day at a park and then the evenings at the park that you're staying near to save transportation time. If you're checking multiple bags for your flight, check the heaviest bag first. If it happens to be over the weight limit, that'll give you a chance to reallocate the weight to a lighter bag to avoid extra fees. Ballet parking at Disney Resorts is $33 a day, which isn't cheap, but it can come in really handy if you have a breakfast reservation at a resort near one of the parks. You can park at the resort for your breakfast reservation, walk to a nearby park, and then return to your car, which will allow you to avoid the bulk of the crowds at the parks. Save time by pre-enrolling in rental car loyalty programs. Oftentimes these programs will let you skip the counter and head directly to your car. Let's talk tips for getting the reservations that you want. Keep your eye on park hours because oftentimes when the park hours are extended and the parks either open up earlier than originally planned or stay open later, new dining reservations for the extended hours will also pop up. 
You can book your Disney World trip way before discounts are announced. And then if and when discounts are announced for your trip dates, you can have the discount applied to your existing reservation. Before you reach your 60 day mark for advanced dining reservations, make sure you have your credit card information up to date. Having to re-enter your credit card information can slow you down when trying to make those especially tricky reservations. For people staying on site who wanna make dining reservations 60 days ahead of time for their whole trip, we recommend logging completely out of the Disney website and then logging back in to make sure the dates for the whole trip will show up for you. To increase your chances of getting the dining reservation times that you want, select a time like 8 a.m. and not a meal like breakfast when making your reservation. Book your dining reservations online 60 days before your trip begins because the website is available one hour earlier than the phone lines. The website opens at 6 a.m. or a little bit earlier versus 7 a.m. for the phones. We recommend having My Disney Experience all set up, have your credit card on hand, and then we would suggest having the phone number on hand, 407-WDW-DINE, in case the website has any technical glitches, and then you can try to make any that you need by phone when the phone lines open at seven. If you have trouble trying to find dining reservations for your party, try adjusting the number up. For example, from a party of two to a party of four, sometimes that will open up additional time slots and then you can adjust the number of guests down later. Although dinner reservations tend to be more popular, if you're heading to Disney World in the summer, we recommend booking a dining reservation for lunch when it is super hot. This way you can sit down, enjoy some AC, have a good meal and simply relax. Can't decide between the Halloween or Christmas parties? If you plan a trip a little over a week in length, you can often see both by going to the very last Halloween party and the very first Christmas one. For people traveling to Disney World with others, we suggest connecting as friends within My Disney Experience so that things like Genie Plus reservations can be booked all at once. You can cancel almost all dining reservations by midnight the night before without any penalty, though Disney officially says it is 24 hours ahead. Many of the restaurants in Disney Springs have limited reservation available through the Disney systems, but if you can't find what you want, try Open Table for additional dining times. Lots of people ask if they should use online check-in when staying at Disney Resorts, which is an option 60 days before your trip begins. We recommend doing it to save time at check-in unless you want to ask for a room upgrade. Don't expect it, but it doesn't hurt to ask. When traveling in a large group, make separate dining reservations if you can't find one that is for your entire group and then check in together. While it isn't guaranteed you will be seated together, there is a good chance you will at least end up side by side. If you are getting online or calling 60 days in advance to make advanced dining reservations, make dining reservations in order of difficulty, not chronological order. Now let's talk traveling with little ones. People using a stroller during their trip who are worried about valuables being stolen should consider packing two bags, one with valuables and one with other items. When the stroller is parked, just take the bag with your valuables in it. Consider bringing your own stroller from home or renting a stroller from an offsite vendor versus renting from Disney. Renting offsite or bringing your own can save you money and will give you access to the stroller for all parts of your trip, not just the time that you're in the parks. Do not laugh at this tip because so many of us have experienced it, but the out of flush toilets often scare little ones at Disney World. So use the manual flush ones that located in the baby care centers or plan to cover the sensors on the toilets with your hand, a sticker or a post-it note. To help your kids prepare for a trip, consider watching videos of Disney World attractions on YouTube. Since there are two stroller rental locations at Epcot, the other parks just have one, you can visit one of them midday after your child gets tired of walking if you need it. One of the stroller rental locations is near the front of the park and the other is located in the World Showcase near the International Gateway. You might wanna watch Disney movies to prepare for your trip. Of course, Disney Plus is a great place to find tons of movies that are represented in the parks. If you're planning a late night in a park, consider bringing your child's PJs with you and changing them into them before they fall asleep. That way, when they get back to your room, you can hopefully slip them into bed without waking them. Cast members will often rearrange park strollers to keep walkways clear. That's why we recommend using something like a balloon or a brightly colored piece of cloth to make it easier to spot your stroller. Consider using small glow sticks on dark rides for kids who are a little scared but still want to ride. It's just enough light to help them without bothering the other guests. If you have a stroller with a low tire, the stroller rental locations at the parks, as well as most resorts, have air pumps you can use. And now for some tips for dining. You can find Starbucks locations inside all four parks, as well as Disney Springs. But the trick is that the locations in the parks aren't called Starbucks, so you may not even know they're there, even though they are full service locations. 
There are many Landry's restaurants nationwide and four located at Disney World, Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex Cafe, Yak and Yeti. If you sign up for Landry Select Club, you get extra perks, including discounts and priority seating. It does cost a one-time fee to join, but you get that amount back and restaurant credit within 24 hours of signing up. When you are planning where to eat, make sure you're also planning on how to get there, especially if you are planning to dine at a resort. We have a navigator free tool that will show you the best way to get from point A to point B at Disney World. When booking dining reservations, you can save time by bookmarking the restaurants you wish to book in your browser or even having multiple tabs open. Just a reminder, you should always make these in order of difficulty and not chronologically, so line your tabs up in that order. Refillable mugs can be purchased at Disney resorts. They come in several different colors and it might be handy to mix and match lid colors to create new color combos that will help you tell everybody's apart. Speaking of refillable mugs, to avoid carrying them into the parks, because you cannot refill them in the parks, only at the resorts, take your mugs to the food court to fill them up at your resort. After that, return to your room and pour them into disposable cups that you can find in your room so you can take the disposable cups to the parks that will keep you from having to carry them around all day. Consider splitting or sharing meals. Not only will it make it easier to save room for dessert, we'll also give you a chance to try more restaurants. You cannot do this at fixed price or family style restaurants, which you can everywhere else. Character meals are a great way to multitask dining and seeing characters all at once. When you're planning where to dine, you should always try to eat near where you will be to avoid spending lots of time on Disney transportation. You can make notes on your dining reservations if you're celebrating something special like a birthday or anniversary. You aren't guaranteed anything extra, but some restaurants will try to do something special. Disney World is known for being a great place to travel if you have food allergies. The most common allergies will be noted on the menus, but you can also contact Disney if you need assistance. Consider going to Contempo Cafe or Steakhouse 71 at the Contemporary Resort on your Magic Kingdom day for good food and atmosphere. It's only a walk or a monorail stop away. Try to use mobile ordering for quick service locations whenever possible. It can help save time, plus it often makes the ordering process easier for families and small groups. Speaking of mobile ordering, it is also available at some table service restaurants for to-go meals, a great option for people that don't want to eat in the restaurant. If you're staying at Art of Animation or Pop Century, consider a dining reservation at Riviera Resort, which is just a Skyliner right away. If you enjoy popcorn, consider purchasing a refillable popcorn bucket. Prices for buckets start around $12 and go up for specialty designs, but you can refill them for around $2 for the entire length of your trip. And finally, for a few photography tips. When holding your camera or phone, hold it at eye level and not above your head. You're gonna get a better shot if you can see what you're photographing and holding your phone or camera up high is distracting to the people behind you. Don't be afraid to change your angle by getting low or moving a few steps in either direction to improve the framing of your pictures. Don't forget about PhotoPass. Even if you aren't positive that you want to buy the photo, it is still free for them to take the shot. And if you have purchased Memory Maker, it makes sense to stop for lots of pics in the park that you can download later. All right, that was quite a list. So let us know, did you learn anything? Or little tidbits you've picked up along the way? Or do you have some tips you'd like to share? We'd love to hear from you in the comments.